Well, that was a long off season, as you can see from the change in attire. It's a different day, uh, <laughs> but I have finally finished the off season. We are up to our opening match against Crawley that we will play out today. I uh, wanted you guys to be able to take a look at the friendlies. A lot of losses in there, but if you take a look, 2-1 uh, loss to Brighton, 3-1 loss to West Ham, 4-2 uh, to, two to Aston Villa, 1-0 uh, to uh, Bournemouth. So we played a lot of big clubs in an effort to uh, try to raise some funds. Uh, we are still a little over a half a million dollars in debt, but we are up 85000 for the season. So that's good. 66000 for this month uh, as we have brought in some revenue. Let's take a quick look at the transfer window. Uh, you can see I was supposed to come back July 1st, but I went ahead and waited to the end uh, right before the match. That way, anything we have done. Now, the problem is we are about $1,400 over our wage bill. I have been trying to loan a few players out. Uh, I have been trying to transfer list a few players, but the ones that I'm trying to list, no interest in. Uh, so, you know, I think we're just going to have to ride on that. And I know I said right before I record yesterday, we couldn't spend all of our wage bill. I did not do this. We did not sign many people. This was all in contract promotion, uh, promotion salary weight, uh, increases. So it just screwed me over. We're going to end up having to let those bleed out a little bit. Let's jump into our transfer window. We're getting a little interest in Ken Humphreys. We've got an offer out to loan in Liam Griffin, a goalkeeper from Swansea, uh, to the end of the season. And Troy Chilcott uh, is a coach. We had one opening on our coaching staff uh, that we got the increase with the promotion this year. So we're looking at bringing him on. He's kind of a well-rounded guy. Uh, unfortunately, it's still going to leave our goalkeeping very lacking, but it is what it is. Let's jump into the transfers here. And you can see we only signed two players. I will go back because I think there were probably, yeah, these were all guys at the end of the season. So we'll take a look at, at the incoming in a minute. Uh, but uh, Ronnie Nickel, James Haney, a lot of these guys uh, you probably won't even recognize. Uh, Ethan Bryant, we ended up loaning him out last year. That was last year. Okay. Andy Scott left on a free. And we did sell Jose Luis Nuevo for 91000 to Doncaster. Very talented player. Five-star ability, uh, according to, you know, potential, uh, according to my staff. He played a lot last year, and he would be in our starting two. However, he can't mark. And I've got a lot of guys that can pass better than him. So my playmaker, I want somebody else playing there. And in the ball-winning midfielder role, we need somebody that can play better defense. So I felt he was expendable. Hated to get rid of a fellow American, of course. But valued at 58, sold for 91. And he came up in our system. So, you know, we make some money on him. And uh, I don't think he'll be a huge loss. We loaned out Aaron Paul. We'll make $725 in fees on him. Uh, Tim Cook, we move off finally to Dulwich Hamlet for $11,500. He kind of fell out of favor with me last year. Why is that not opening? Came up in our system. He actually had that real productive year, 19 goals, 15 assists, that got us promoted out of the Vonorama South, but uh, only three goals in nine appearances uh, in the league, and four of those were off the bench. Just didn't see him fitting into the plans, so we pick up a little bit of money on him. Eden Allard, uh, another guy, a center back, 7500 uh, we had signed him for $4,300, so we make $3,200 on him after uh, two seasons. And again, mostly coming off the bench uh, the last two years. Solid enough defender, but we renewed that loan for uh, Bakar 
what's his name? Bakar. Bakar Suma. That's it. And uh, so, you know, we were able to move him off. Uh, and we've loaned out John Perinello, and Steve Fletcher has gone to Kings Lynn on a free. On the flip side, coming in since the end of the season, Harvey Moore Byron, 18 uh, year old English youth, four star current, five star potential. He could play all three positions. Uh, looks like we'll be slotting him in at left back. Uh, he's from Liverpool, he was released. And uh, we picked him up on a free, and he'll step into our projected starting 11. Uh, Nathan Parkins from Cardiff Met Uni uh, of uh, Feed the Owen uh, fame from Loki's channel. Uh, he's 19 year old, years old, a Welshman, and valued at $450. A very good finishing, and so hopefully uh, he will be able to step in for Cook and be a reserve up top we got him on a free and you can see he scored one goal in eight friendlies not the greatest return mostly off the bench but he may get some starts uh either him or doyle because mudge is out here at the beginning of the season uh george porter a new left winger from lincoln comes in on a free uh he can play central mid but he's going to be moving in and replacing ireland who uh, we've tried to move, nobody's come in for him, and he's not even making the bench right now. So there's that. We have, uh, we've kept him as captain, but we have uh, changed our vice captain. So uh, we picked him up on a free uh, during the season last year, uh, but he did not make any appearances. And, you know, he appeared last year, but, you know, it was a postseason move. Uh, Jay Lee... From Oxford City, uh, we paid $34,500 for him. A uh, possible future starter for us. Uh, we had a five-star rating when we scouted him, and it's now a four that he's on the team. And he's actually started a few games. He's allowed six goals in eight appearances, uh, but he does have five shutouts in those eight appearances. So a lot of those goals were in some of those uh high scoring affairs against some of the bigger clubs. So he's going to push Humphreys for starting time, but I think right now Humphreys is going to retain that number one jersey. Moving into the current season, uh, Nicky Sanders from Coventry on a free. Uh, again, he's a striker, left winger, more of a left winger, five-star potential. Uh, I would like to actually loan him out. And you know what? Even if I could get somebody to pick up some of his salary, that would be good. I think I actually promised promised him that I would try to get him a loan. And uh, from Leighton Orient, we pick up George Frost, uh, left back, center back, um, six foot five, good jumping reach. Hopefully, he can develop. He is twenty three years old, four and a half star potential. So we'll we'll see where he slots in. We'll give him uh, we'll give him the opportunity to kind of play off the bench probably and get some starting time. But moving Allard, we needed some depth, and that's uh, that's what made Allard uh, expendable. So there's the transfers. If we take a look at our team depth chart, and I use my youth development as he is the better scout. So you see, we have Humphreys, Lee, and Hughes. Unfortunately, before right before I signed Lee, I had extended Hughes's contract, and now I can't trade him. Uh, I can't sell him or get him out on uh, <laughs> get him out on a loan. Uh, is Cuierto kind of in the same thing? I gave him a contract, and then we brought in some players. So that was poor thinking on my part. I'll probably try to move him again uh, later in the year, uh, probably in the. Um, mid-season transfer window. Uh, we do have him transfer listed, pretty sure. Well, let's just try to offer him out again. And you know what? I will even contemplate a loan. Uh, no, you're going to have to pick up all of his wages, though, because I kind of want him off the off the wage bill. 
All right, uh, Hemmings, Bakar, Suma in the mid, uh, more Byron on the left with Frost backing him up. Uh, if if more Byron has to move inside or Frost, then the other one can fill in. We also have Lewis Taylor there. Uh, more Byron, <laughs> we'd like him on the outside, but we're going to end up with Taylor and Izquierdo probably out there. Uh, Bliss, Bryant, and Ellis will be our central midfield. Um, Porter can move back there if we need. Carmichael on the right. Bliss, Scovey, and Doyle can fill in for depth. Porter on the left with McCarthy and Ireland behind him. Uh, Williams and Mudge will be our strike force again this year. Uh, Parkins will be up there and Doyle behind him. Brunt, if he has to play striker, we are in big trouble because he's not very good up there. So let's get into the match today. So we're going to go with Humphreys in goal, Moore Byron on the left, Hemmings and Frost in the middle, uh, Bakar Suma on the right, Ellis and Bryan in the midfield, Porter and Carmichael on the wings, and it's going to be Parkins joining Williams up top today with Mudge being sidelined. Of course, it is a big step up in competition being in League 2 this year. So that is something. Have fun. All right, let's encourage him. And Humphreys controls that ball. More Byron looks like he went down himself on the tackle. Williams, good layoff, that big first touch that we're used to seeing with him. And he's in, and he dinks the keeper, and that's the first goal. We're a minute and a half into our season, and we are on the score sheet in League 2. That is a huge accomplishment right there, I think. Very, very nice ball by Carmichael. Remember, he set the league assist record for the Vanarama National last year. Uh, so big, big opening for him. And here's another opportunity just outside the box. Carmichael with the set piece. He curls it around the wall, headed away. Williams is on it. And it's knocked away by Hobbs. We'll take the corner. Good start to the season. I am very happy. Hemmings could not get head to that ball. That's too bad. I'm really kind of wondering about my center backs. Hemmings, remember, end of last year, thought he might just kind of be losing his place there. Not sure. Let's encourage him again. Try to keep it positive. So Frost is playing well in his first game. Bryant playing a 6-9, right up, got up to a 7 for a second. Carmichael's on a 7-2. And Williams is on a 7-2. So playing pretty well. There's Bryant and Ellis in the midfield partnering up. Keeping control of the ball. Oh, there's a nice ball. Through to Carmichael, and he slots it home. He's on the score sheet for this season, and that makes it crawly nil, Tiverton Town 2. I don't know if I expected this, but we will take it. We will most certainly take it. A lot of players playing well. Frost has picked up a yellow card, something to keep an eye on. All right, there's more Byron. I'm kind of interested to see, oh my gosh, Ellis was right there, and Graham Williams got a foot in. I thought that was an own goal for just a second, but evidently Graham Williams got a, uh, got a foot on that ball. I'll have to kind of keep an eye. Let's take another look at that. The Porter, nice inlet, saved away, and yeah, Williams just got his foot in front of Hobbs to tap it in. He's on a brace, and we're going to take a three-goal advantage into halftime. And unfortunately, a shoulder injury for George Porter, uh, and he is on the left side. So we're going to put Scobie out there because we are training Scobie to fill in on that left side to where he could play both. So hopefully... Uh, this will give him some extra minutes to, um, you know, start learning that. Uh, definitely a shot and on-target advantage. 
2.37 XG. Very happy with that. I'm happy with the way things are going. Keep it going. Let's praise him here to start the second half. I hope that injury to Porter is not dire. They're playing five at the back, a flat three. Parkins clears it over to Carmichael, or at least he tried. That was not a good ball. And Humphreys, what a save. We saw that last, late last season in the, uh, in fact, in the last episode when we did the double. If you haven't seen that, we did raise two pieces of silverware last episode. So I suggest going back and checking that out to see how we got promoted because we won the league and we won the FA Trophy in that episode. All right, we are into the 70th minute. I think I'm going to go ahead and make another sub here. Frost. You know what? I'm going to bring, well, Bakar Suma's on a yellow as well. Bakar Suma's not playing great out there, and he has, uh, he is tired. Let's bring, um, I'm going to move more Byron over to the left side. He could play there. And then we'll bring on Hugel out there on the left. That'll be our second sub of the match. Keeping an eye on Scobie. The first time he's really come into the picture since coming on it right before halftime. And that one goes wide, but that was some good ball movement by Crawley. Just kind of waiting around to see if we're going to get to the... All right, let's, uh, let's focus. And like that. All right, let's wait and see if they do anything off of the corner. Hit it out. They know, so let's go ahead and make our last sub here. Overwhelmed, uninterested. Fair enough. Uh, Parkins, you're playing a 6-6. Six, six. What about, let's bring Doyle on for Parkins there. You know, I would I should have pulled off Williams because Williams is the one guy, especially with Mudge being out, that I do not want to risk getting tired, getting injured, even if he's on a hat trick, right? But I know a lot of you guys will lose your mind pulling somebody off on two goals. There's Williams. Good touch. Scobie ahead to Doyle. He's into the box. Uh, and Carmichael, where were you? Could have been back post there. Headed clear. Heading into the 90th minute. Carmichael whips that one in, and the header goes over. Couldn't tell who got on that ball. Three minutes of stoppage time, about a minute left. We've looked pretty good in this one. Not sure, you know, how good Crawley is. Uh, I guess, oh, Williams, oh, near post for the hat trick in the 93rd minute. And that was a beautiful assist by Carmichael. He's on a 7-9. Williams with the hat tricks on an 8-2. That, a nice turn by Carmichael. And just a beautiful lead right to the edge of the six-yard box. Williams beats the keeper to the ball, beats him at the near post. And we are top of the table in League 2. 21 shots, 9 on target, an XG of 3. Got to like that. We'll also take a look before we end the episode to see kind of the preseason uh, preview. Happy with the result. Just, you know, just see where we're projected to end up, where Crawley was at. So they are in the relegation. We are top of the table. Three automatic promotions this year, if that's if I remember that correctly. Orders oh, seven to nine weeks. That is not good. A broken collarbone. I think we've got to spend the money. 
you know, we don't have money to burn, but I think in that case, we owe it to our player. Frost, a debut to remember. More Byron, Porter, and Parkins also made their debuts. Williams, of course, the class. We'll praise him up. All right, let's take a look at the competition. We're supposed to fight bravely against relegation. And we are picked to finish 23rd. Now, I mean, you know, we're only one game away from being in 23rd, so that is possible. Uh, Aston will be, oh, wow, Aston Villa got relegated. No, they did not get relegated. They're just in League Two. Interesting. So they were in the championship, got relegated in 59-60. So that was six years ago. And uh, they've gotten promoted back and forth. A yo-yo team. The last time they got relegated out of League One was 63-64. So they've really fallen out since dipping out of the championship. That's interesting. We've got Luton, Petersboro. Accrington and Bristol. Stockport is picked to stay up. And remember, they got in behind us. They were fourth in the league behind us. And who are our best players? Taking a look. Who they project are our key players. Uh, Porter, newly acquired. And, of course, lost now. And more Byron. Uh, so that is good. Do we have a third? No, we do not. So two of our new players, at least they're two of our better talents. Uh, we are in trouble without Park uh, Porter out there. And let's see. I just kind of want to figure out. We've got McCarthy out there. Ireland could come back into the side. McCarthy's 17. He's got a lot of pace. I think he needs to play. I think this is one of those cases Ireland might be better right now. But remember, Ireland is 25 and McCarthy is 17. So I think we go ahead and play McCarthy, take the uh, you know, take the lesser current talent and hopefully that develops him. I mean, that's you're, you're looking at 2 months of of matches which is going to do a world of good for him, I hope. Let me know what you guys think. Is that the right call with McCarthy? Should I keep? Should I play him and give him that that game time for seven to nine weeks, or am I making a big mistake there? Let me know down in the comments. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell just to remember to stay up to date on the days the videos do come out. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next episode. Have a good one. Bye.